If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I will provide a demonstration on configuring a wireless LAN service using a hotspot whisper portal with the walled garden in the Smart Zone controller. So let's get started. I have already logged into this Smart Zone instance using a Super Admin account. We can observe that it's a high scale instance and it's in the 5.2 Smart Zone release. Under the grouping in the middle, we see that there are a few partner domains and subdomains already configured. We are going to configure our service underneath the partner domain 1 we see here at the top that already has a zone that is configured underneath it. We have already created a hotspot portal in a previous demonstration so it is now ready to be associated with a wireless LAN and provide hotspot service to clients. Because hotspot services are configured at the zone level, for us to use it, we will need to configure a wireless LAN underneath the same zone. We will now navigate to the wireless LAN tab and that is where we will click on the zone that the hotspot portal is configured. Once the zone is selected, we will click on the create button. Once the Create Wireless LAN Configuration option window opens, we can begin the configuration of our hotspot wireless LAN. First, we will name the wireless LAN, which will auto-populate the SSID value. However, this can be different from the name if needed. We will verify it is in the zone, Partner 1, Zone 1, to ensure that the hotspot portal will be available to us to use. We will select the Hotspot Authentication option, which will populate additional sections named Hotspot Portals lower in the configuration window, as we can see. Although you can select an authentication method other than Open, for this service we will be leaving it to the Open setting, which is the most common setting for Hotspot Wireless LANs. As with authentication options, different encryption options are available as well, but the most common is set to None. As with other wireless LANs as well, data plane tunnels can be activated for this service if needed. However, these tunnels will already need to be identified under the zone settings before you can add them to this wireless LAN service. That leads us to the new section that is enabled when selecting the authentication type hotspot above. Here we can either select our hotspot service that has already been configured or we can press the plus sign and create a new portal for this wireless LAN. We will leave it at our previously configured portal, but you can see how this is done in different videos within this series where we configure this portal that we are using here. Our other options with this section are to turn off or keep on the CNA service. This service is known as the Apple Captive Network Assistant. The function of this service is to aid a client when connecting to a wireless network where the CNA feature launches a pre-browser login utility allowing users to complete their authentication process before leaving the wireless LAN page on their Apple devices. Next is the portal detection and suppression profile options which allows, as the name suggests, to restrict certain users from accessing the portal. This is done by a detection of patterns that are distinctive to certain devices. A portal can be created and populated with the user agent patterns and give you the ability to block users based on the patterns their device would be sending. We are not going to set any suppression on our configuration today, so we will move on to the authentication settings. Options for authentication by default are always accept and local database. Always accept is typically used when you simply want a user to acknowledge or agree to the terms of service or some other message you want to put before them before they use the service. The local database option provides the ability to populate a database housed in Smart Zone with accounts clients would use to authenticate to this service. The database is manually populated and can be maintained under the Client, Users and Roles, Local Users tab. The third option is to configure an authentication service that will forward credentials to an outside authentication device. There are other videos in this series that shows how an authentication service can be configured. 
We have a non-proxy authentication service already configured, so we will select it for our authentication method. The last option in the Hotspot Portal section is an accounting service. This provides reporting of clients' connections, disconnects, and bandwidth usage to an external accounting device. You can either select an existing configured service or create your own by clicking the plus sign to the right of the window. Other options you can elect to enable is client isolation, where the clients connected to the wireless LAN service cannot connect to other clients connecting to the same wireless LAN. These are enabled by default and can be disabled. If enabled, an isolation whitelist can be configured. However, if not, then the default list provides an auto detection of the gateway, providing the forwarding of client traffic out the network. As with other wireless LANs, there are other options for wireless LAN service that can be configured before you complete the wireless LAN setup. This includes firewall options that allow filtering of traffic, devices, and URL access. Other videos in this series show how each one of these options can be configured for the wireless LAN. Under the advanced options, additional settings can be configured that are consistent with most wireless LANs that are configured in SmartZone. Once configurations are complete, press OK. Once configured, it will be available to all APs that are associated with this zone. Connecting clients will be limited to a walled garden or traffic profile configured under the hotspot portal until they authenticate which lifts the restrictions of their connections. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration. Mm -hmm.